Listen to Eddie Grimm. The token black director of The Marvels is already calling the audience racist for not buying tickets. There are producers of movies named Kathleen Kennedy and Kevin Feige. They are responsible for some of the worst writing in Marvel and Star Wars movies on their streaming services. These Hollywood elites think that they are paying respect to African Americans by selecting a woman of color to direct the Marvels. What does a movie critic of color think of this shallow pandering? There's a very high chance that if you're watching this video, you have not watched the Marvel. The new movie featuring Brie Larson as Captain Marvel is not impressive. And for those of you who think that people are just hating because it's all women, I guarantee you that is not the case. This is a terribly written movie. And in this video, I am going to be doing a scene comparison between a good movie and a bad movie. And I'm going to be using Thor Ragnarok as the scene to compare with. Now, remember, in Thor Ragnarok, we had Hela. The first thing that this movie, The Marvels, does terribly is a lack of context and setup. When the movie starts, they show you a dying sun. Then the next thing they show you is some other planet. Then they show you Darben, who is the villain. She looks as intimidating as an angry librarian, in my opinion. You see her, she's excavating something from the ground. She breaks this shell thing. And then inside is this bango MacGuffin that she needs. What is this planet? Who knows? Like, how did she end up there? Who knows? How did she find the bango? Who knows? Why is the bango inside this thing? Who knows? There is no context. There is no setup. And this is the introduction to the villain. Someone online once said, your movie is only as good as your villain. This shows that the Marvels is lazily written. The people who wrote this movie, probably it was AI, it wasn't even people, they just simply said, we need a villain. So ha, just whip out the villain, show that they got the MacGuffin thing, cut to the next scene. That's literally what happens. There I just described it. She breaks rock, she finds Bango, she asks where is the other Bango. It's cut, it cuts to Miss Marvel. That's how poorly written it is. You can't compare it to something like Hela. Is race swapping and gender swapping in movies and franchises respectful to different ethnicities? If you are a critic, then does that mean you don't respect diverse backgrounds? I can tell you this reviewer, Eddie Grimm, is an educated man who knows volumes about the art of storytelling and how to put a movie together. Movies that are put together badly will bomb. Movies that are written well will have people of all colors, ethnicities, creeds, and orientations throwing their hard-earned money at them to see the movie over and over again. I saw the original Thor four times at the movie theater, dragging friends and family to see it because I was awed that finally we had writers who got the comic book characters the setting of Asgard, and the relationship between Odin, Thor, and Loki. Someone made a movie for me, and I spent money on it to see it at the theater. I like Eddie Grimm's comparison of the Marvels to Thor Ragnarok, because if you don't know how to make a Marvel superhero movie, you should not be handed the crown jewel to direct in this movie studio. When Hela shows up, you know why she shows up. She shows up because Odin has just passed and she shows up in a specific place right next to our hero. You know why she's there. You know how she ended up there. You know why suddenly she pops up. Number two has to be the fact that Hela is an intimidating villain. From looking at her, you can simply tell from just even Thanos, for example, but I'm using Hela in this case. I'm using Hela because that's also a female villain for those of you who think that the movie is just getting hate because women, right? Hela is an intimidating villain. When you look at her from the crown thing that she has on her head, she looks like the kind of female you don't want to fuck around with. Live for Black TV! White folks are dead, we're getting the fuck out of here! Let's roll down! Right? But Darben, the female villain of the Marvels, Jesus Christ, she looks as intimidating as a street child carrying a hammer. Like, I cannot look at her and take her seriously. Not even for five minutes. She... I don't know if she was miscast or it's the actor who has an issue in how she relays herself on screen. I don't know. She is not 
powerful looking, she's not intimidating. And this just makes the movie just feel like it has no real tension because, I mean, you're supposed to feel that, A, if my hero interacts with this villain, he's gonna get pummeled, but you never get that feeling with the Marvels. I wish someone like Eddie Grimm was at the head of Marvel Studios or Disney+, Plus, and I have no shame in saying so. This man knows what he is talking about. Next up has to be establishing dominance. Look at this scene where Hela appears and then Thor is introducing himself to Hela. What does Hela say? Kneel before your queen. Kneel. Before your queen. Kneel before your queen. That's her way of trying to establish dominance, right? And show that she's more powerful. But I guarantee you this. When Captain Marvel meets Darben for the first time, you know what happens? Captain Marvel flies in. She shoots some ray at Darben, absorbs it with the bracelet. She smiles like a crackhead rapper with, with grills on. And then Captain Marvel flies off. That's literally what happens. That is, that is the first interaction between the villain and the hero. And the phony multiculturalists running Disney Marvel and all of their fake virtue signaling is revealed for what it truly is, a lie. Thank you.